Well, I guess somebody else saw last year's Hellfest and said, bitch, please. So Haunt tells the story of a group of teenagers that go off on Halloween night to an off-the-beaten-path haunted house, and they quickly discover that the people running this haunted house have some very sinister plans. What's up, guys? Welcome to another horror film review for 2019. Not too many of these left in the calendar year, so it's good to be able to squeeze in one more before Dr. Sleep, and then that might be it, unless I'm forgetting one. So... This movie was directed and written by the guys who wrote A Quiet Place. This stars a guy who's been pretty active in my circle of the horror community, the horror online community, Damian Maffei. He's the guy who played the sack head in Strangers Pray at Night. And it also is produced by Eli Roth. So you put all three of those things together. You put a poster that has haunted house masks. There's a devil mask, there's a clown mask. And that's about all I knew walking into this, was the names attached and the faces on the poster. And you know what? Walking into this completely blind, not really knowing what it was about, what to expect, and just having a small amount of intrigue with the names attached as my only pretext walking into Haunt might have been the best way to watch this film, because this, thus far, might be my biggest surprise of 2019. Now keep in mind, for myself personally, this has been a very disappointing, mediocre year for horror films in 2019. A lot of the big films that have made splashes and everybody's been talking about at length didn't quite do it for me. Some of them I liked, some of them I had a good enough time with, but none of them really have I loved this year. Thus far, Child's Play is my favorite horror film, and even that film has some serious issues, so there hasn't really been this horror film that's blown me away this year. Know that as a pretext to what I'm about to say. Haunt, thus far, is probably my second favorite horror film of the year, just behind Child's Play. But why was it good? Let's talk about it. So, getting into the positives of Haunt. First and foremost, I love the atmosphere that they brought with this really decrepit haunted house. Atmosphere is so important in a horror film, especially when you're going for something that has like a concept like this, like a haunted house or like Hellfest really fell on its face with, with this horror amusement park. If it's gonna be a slasher film, which we've seen a dime a dozen, if it's gonna be about kids getting picked off one by one, one of the tools in your utility belt that you probably should try to utilize if you are a horror filmmaker is to nail an atmosphere, and they do that really well in Haunt. There's certain aspects of this haunted house that feels almost creepy because it's so basic. It's not going over the top. There's not like a shitload of production value going into this haunted house. It feels like something that somebody threw together on a weekend in this abandoned warehouse. And when you get into the story, that kind of makes sense, but it really does feel decrepit enough and basic enough to where that kind of adds to the claustrophobia and adds to the uneasy feeling that this does not feel like a, uh, a corporately owned haunted house. We might have fucked up coming in here. I just want to get out of here. We just want to leave. And the movie does a good job at utilizing that atmosphere too with the way that it's shot. There's times where people have to get into these little wooden coffins and suddenly they're in this open area that becomes this really small area that uh, they're just waiting for doors to be opened. There's certain aspects where they have to go into these small tunnels which kind of plays on claustrophobia a bit. They'll see things move inside the tunnels and just as soon as they kind of get a glimpse of it, it's gone. So not enough to know what it is, just enough to know that it's there. Even the villains themselves, which I will get more into because they are another positive, the way that they're kind of cloaked in darkness, the way that they have different aspects to their outfits where they're all wearing different masks, they all kind of have a different vibe to them, a different presence to them, that they do add to this haunted house. If you've been to a haunted house, you know there's people that work there that they all go for something different to scare you, and they kind of do the same thing with the villains. But the villains aren't trying to scare you, they're trying to kill your ass. Color me shocked, the acting is actually really good in this film. That is something that most slasher films, probably 90% of slasher films, cannot say. And there was no performances in this film where they felt bad, they felt poor, they felt like they were just really out of place amongst the other actors with them. No, there's like six or seven kids in this, there's a bunch of different actors playing the villains, which all 
kind of vary in how much they have to do in this film. And every single one of the people that were hired to act in this film were convincing. They were convincing at being scary if you were a villain, and they were convincing at being scared if you were a victim. And I even liked the subtlety that they had with the main character. She kind of gives a little bit of a, a speech at one point in the film, kind of giving a little bit of a a scope inside of her psychology, who she is as a person, and kind of what makes her tick. You know, what, what the driving force is of who she is as a character. And it's subtle enough to where, at the time, you almost feel like it's a throwaway. You're like, okay, this is a time where you probably wouldn't be sitting here telling backstory. You'd probably be scared out of your mind, but let's see what you have to say. And then by the end of the film, what she has to say really does kind of come full circle with where she goes as a character. Her, her whole arc, is how she responds to this event in her past and how she utilizes how she responded to that to how she responds to this current situation that she's in. It was subtle enough to where it didn't feel like it overshadowed all the other characters to where it's like, okay, she's the only character I care about, the rest of them are cannon fodder. But it was complex enough with how they use it in the plot that it never felt like it was just superfluous. Like some slasher movies, you get backstory, you get details and characters and you're like, that amounted to nothing. They literally were here to be killed. You don't have that problem in Haunt. And now the villains. Now the villains pretty much go unnamed. They're basically, you're probably just gonna know them as like devil and clown. I don't remember what they were credited as in the credits, but you have people in different Halloween costumes that are at first seeming like they're just novelties in this haunted house. They're putting on little scary shows and doing little scary things to kind of add to the atmosphere of this little haunted house thrill ride. And whenever the movie and the characters are fully revealed that these guys are out to actually murder them, they get very effective because as these masks come off, figuratively and literally, you really get to see different sides of these villains. You get like different facial features, that's all I'm gonna say, that will make them stand out, that kind of add to their creepiness. And you almost wanna know more about them by the end. You're like, what brought all of these whack-ass motherfuckers together? Because that was some fucked up shit. And they are intimidating. This is one of the things, again, with slasher movies, especially modern slasher movies, that they kind of take for granted. They just kind of rely on jump scares. I honestly don't even remember if there were jump scares in this film. That's how great they were at not utilizing and not relying on jump scares like so many. Even huge budget movies do nowadays. This relied on the atmosphere and it relied on the darkness and the lighting and it relied on tension, which this movie does have. And the villains do a great job at bringing that forth. Once you know full on well that these guys are out to murder them, they are intimidating. And when you get in these little claustrophobic spaces, when you feel like there's no door that's not locked and they're coming at you and all they have is just a little pitchfork, you're like, oh, where's that pitchfork going? And the carnage candy in Haunt. Wasn't nearly as gory as I thought it was going to be with the name Eli Roth attached to it. I will say that. So kind of to temper your expectations a bit with the gore, it's not hostile level gore, but there is some good gore in Haunt. And that was another thing I was like, please tell me we're gonna see faces torn off and guts come open. And there is some really nice kills that feel unique enough. They feel real enough to where it's not like, it feels grounded and real enough of a situation where these characters, these villains, wouldn't be having these huge elaborate death scenes and kill scenes, but they're gory enough to where you really feel it. Like you'll see certain scenes and you're like, oh God, please do not ever let me be in a situation like this. And that's what a good horror movie should do. That's what a good villain should do. And that's what good kills should do. It would make you squirm in your seat and go, please God, do not let me ever be that person. And while I'm not gonna give details, I will say too that this movie really does land the ending. It does give you a nice little punch at the end to leave off with that you go, fuck yeah, that was cool. Not overhyping it, like it's not like the greatest ending in the world. It's not something that's gonna be like, talked about for years, but for a movie like this that could have easily just trailed off and went the typical route and been just fine, they give you an extra little nugget of badass at the last two, three minutes where you're like, thank you, Haunt. Thank you for sticking the landing. Now moving on to some negatives. I only have a few, and some of them are gonna feel like things that I say a lot. Mostly is the horror cliches, the slasher cliches. Haunt doesn't quite escape them. Now there are a large chunk of this film that does not get bogged down at all by these cliches. It's mostly just like in the last 20 minutes, which kind of drew more attention to it, to be honest with you, because the movie went so long without having to utilize a lot of these kind of tricks and writing holes that 
slasher films and horror films often find themselves pitfalled into. You get into the last 20 minutes and you start to see character decisions that make no sense. You start to see things that just feel very over the top and exaggerated for how a grounded human being would respond to the situation. And to me, they were so in succession. There's like maybe four of them, but they happen within like a 15 minute period to where it feels very much like the movie is heading that route. And I got scared for a minute. I was like, no, Haunt, you were so close. Don't fuck it up. Luckily, they weren't bad enough to where it derailed the movie at all. It just kind of stuck out at the end like, damn. Because there's so many times where I honestly feel like if you just paid a little bit more time, a little bit more, a little bit more TLC to your script, that you could escape those pitfalls and the movie would be better for it. But nonetheless, it's a slasher film. Keep your eyes out. The last 30 minutes or so, there's two or three typical slasher cliches where you're going to go, all right, Haunt, all right. And the only other negative I have is one character played by an actor named Andrew Caldwell. I've seen him in a few things in the past. He's in a small scene in that movie with Dane Cook, my best friend's girl, where he's like the sad kid at the prom. There's a movie called College that had Drake Bell in it, which was kind of like a, a light, raunchy comedy, and he was kind of the, the humorous fat guy in that one, and he kind of plays into that here. I've never really got this guy. Like, you'd never really see him, so I'm probably one of the only people that even recognized him, but even beyond recognizing him, he's the cliche, fat, goofy guy, but he also has, like, this attitude to him, and to me, it never landed. Like, there's times where he actually walks up to, like, a dude in the mask, and he's like, what's your fucking name, bro? What's your fucking name? And he's, like, this close to his face, and I'm like, please just put a fucking hammer in that dude's head or something just to show that he ain't shit, because that whole tough guy thing, I wanted to laugh. Luckily, not a big piece of the movie. But overall, guys, like I said, Haunt, gigantic surprise. Like, I would have overlooked this movie completely had I not had the social media kind of presence that I have and people like Damian Maffei really building this up because he plays a role in this. He's the one who plays the devil. Um, and just kind of getting that little hint out there that there's this movie Haunt coming that I had such no expectations for whatsoever. I decided to throw it on Sunday morning really big surprise and like i said as it stands right now aside from child's play my favorite horror film of the year which is saying a lot with all the mediocre experiences that i've had thus far do you want to see my face so go in with no expectations, and I think you will really enjoy what Haunt brings, really nailing a lot of the great aspects of slasher films that so many modern ones tend to stumble their feet with. So check this thing out online right now as it's available on VOD and theaters, and when it comes to the shelves, go out and buy it. Just in case you're wondering where I saw it, because it was a little bit difficult to find, I actually found it on Google Play. I think it's also on Vudu. It cost me like five bucks to rent, so you can watch it on VOD right now, or you can go out, I think it's in the select theaters, so go check out Haunt. Now, please like and subscribe, share this video, check out the social media links down below in the video description, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and my Patreon page, which is a great way to give back to this channel, help this channel grow, and get cool exclusive content for your eyes only if you decide to become a patron. Also below that is my Spreadshirt store. It's where all my merchandise is, all my designs designed by my buddy Woody Bowen. You can check all that out down below. There's shirts, pants, stickers, all kinds of stuff down there, so please check that out. And if you want to check out some more of my reviews, you can check those out by clicking right over here.